expectations are what people want you to be and what people push you to be. You deal with expectations from your parents once you graduate high school, uh, what college to go to, what careers to pursue that will make the most money. And you will be dealing with expectations of society, of who you should be, of how you should be, of your life. I was talking to a young uh, barista in Starbucks today. And for those that uh, know me, know that I love talking to my baristas, the girls that are the servers in Starbucks. Why? Because every few months they cycle, they change jobs because a lot of these girls are girls going to college or girls coming back from college. So I'm always dealing with uh, new and younger people. And I'm, I'm on like an episode of Saved by the Bell, the summer edition. I love living down in Florida. And I was talking to one of the, uh, the younger baristas who's getting ready to go to college. And she's an adopted uh, daughter. And so her parents, I believe, are well-to-do money-wise. And they're in the medical field. And they're pushing her to get into the medical field. They have an expectation that we want you to pursue a certain career because we feel it's the best for you. And that's a big problem, you know. I mean, the parents, I can understand, and I watched my boundaries with the situation. The parents, I can understand, they sacrificed and they raised a daughter and they adopted her. And so I could tell the daughter feels obligated to the parents. And certainly, look, you have to respect for the parents, for the fact that parents sacrificed and they uh, gave you a good life, gave you shelter, food, safety. However, when a bird gets ready to leave the nest, and that's the job of a bird, every well-abled bird, if a bird has the physical wings to fly, they should fly. No bird okay, should stay in the nest. There's a lot of young, immature men, okay, staying with mommy, okay, claiming that they're helping mommy, but really they treat their mama horrible, okay, and what they should do is go figure out life and then come back to mommy, and there's a lot of daughters waiting for their mother to die so they can get an inheritance because they don't want to work. Leaving the nest is part of becoming an adult, and guess what, guys? You fail a little bit. You fall. You break a wing, okay, but Part of becoming an adult is developing yourself and finding out what do you expect of yourself. Some people don't expect anything from themselves. But you shouldn't just do what people expect you to do. I told this young girl, I said, look, you should respect your parents and you should do what you need to do for school and for your career and for your life. But she had a passion for singing. And she was going to go to college no matter what, but she was trying to find out what to major in, whether it's the healthcare field or or like, you know, the arts, the creative arts. Now, I told her, because I'm an honest person, I said, look, you, you know that the creative arts, uh, music, singing, painting, etc., there's not much money in it. Uh, very few people make a living off the creative arts. There's a saying called the starving artist, okay? And so... The alternative to that was she does something that she doesn't like, that she's not inspired with, which is going to the medical field. And she feels like she can't do both. I said, well, one is go and get some type of certification, show up and figure it out as you go. Savant, but all super chat. Parents are selfish. They can be. Thank you, brother. There can be an expectation because I raised you and sacrificed for you, you owe me. But I don't think that's having a child. I think that's having an indentured servant. Okay. So if there are some parents who say, look, I raised you. I paid for your college. I paid for your house, your car. Now you have to act a certain way. What they raised was an indentured servant. They didn't raise a child. Okay. And you didn't ask to be born into this world. However, when you start to talk back to your parents or not that necessarily, when you start to break the expectation that they had for you, you also break that safety net. I've shared with you guys the story. My my dad, even though I've always been a hard worker, always been a positive person, he didn't like 
okay, that I didn't tell him that I sold my house and that I was getting ready to live as a nomad, live on the road out of my car. He thought obviously it was going backwards in life like most of society do. And he felt like I should have told him. I owed that to him. I tried to tell him initially, but it, I could tell there was all this pushback, you know, that I don't, this isn't the expectation I have for you. You know, you're supposed to be either in a house or, you know, and things like that. And so I just stopped sharing with him. Okay. Because I was nervous enough, scared enough selling my house, you know, getting ready to travel different states, try to figure out how I can get to Florida all by myself, no one else. So I was already scared. I don't need someone else pushing their fears or their expectations on me. Because every time a parent or society or a friend, every time someone pushes an expectation on you, it kills your creativity, it kills your confidence, it kills your peace. You need all those things to push forward in life because life is filled with dookie emojis. I don't care if you're in the medical field or if you're tap dancing on the sidewalk. Life is filled with dookie emojis. Now look, you need money, okay? That's true. So I, I, I didn't lie to this young girl. I don't lie to anyone. Uh, you know, to me, I kind of chose the path. You know, when I graduated high school, I really didn't want to get into construction, but I saw the money bag emoji, okay? And I saw that if I sacrificed and if I got in, I could leverage that up, May, you know, and build my career. So I hated it, but I did, I dealt with it because I really, I didn't have a, like, expect, I didn't have a dream of being a singer or Broadway, uh, you know, show. Like this, this girl, this barista, she has a dream, a vision of being a, a Broadway music performer. My mom always had that same passion of being a singer. Okay. She would work on the weekdays and then sing at church on the weekends. And my father didn't like that when they were still married. And that was part of the divorce because my father had an expectation that I'm a provider, I'm working, you should be home with the children, especially on the weekends, and we should all be sitting down on Sunday dinner. Old school Italian guy. He pushed his expectation on my mother and on, on, on the family, and it killed her creativity, it killed her confidence, it killed her peace, and eventually it killed the marriage. Now, my mom played a part, so I'm not going to sit here and say that I understand life, but what I'm trying to tell you is, the same way my father put expectations on my mother is the same way he put expectations on me. There's a reason I still talk to my mother and I don't talk to my father, okay? And it's not because of money, because I cut myself off from an inheritance from my father. I could have easily played the game and got more money. Sometimes money is not worth your peace, your confidence, and your joy. Never forget it. And when I told this young barista girl... Because, again, I'm living on an episode of Saved by the Bell, the summer edition. Okay, some of you people still living in New Jersey. I'm going to pray for you. What I told this young barista was that, look, you know, you should certainly get an education and get some certifications. But if you're not married, if you don't have children, if you don't have a mortgage, that is the time to go after your creative venture. Because that's doing it responsibly. You know, whether it's to get a degree in the musical arts or... I said, look, even if you were a musical performer and you made, you know, 30000 or 50000 a year, the average salary in America is $50,000 a year. Now, it'd be very hard to make $50,000 a year in the creative art space. But even if she made half of that or 30000 she wouldn't be living this great life. But if she doesn't have children, if she doesn't have a mortgage, she should go after it. Okay. Now, you know, obviously she should have a backup plan. Because again, you know, like, you know, eventually if she does want to have children, family, etc., you're going to need, you know, a career. But the bottom line is if you live simple, if you don't have children, if you don't have a debt, you can do a lot of different things. That's why I do like the nomad life. Even if you have children, you can homeschool, you can do some different things. I saw today in the Florida State Parks, look, you could be a work camper. You know, you can have live rent free, work 20 hours a week at the, at the state park and, you know, do something on the side, DoorDash, Uber, you can get by. Now, look, I, there's certainly people that abuse society's expectations, meaning they automatically push back on society and their parents and they want to be a bum, okay? Now, look, I dress like a bum. I may even look like a bum, okay? But I'm a productive person. I always have been, always will be. My track record on YouTube shows that because <laughs> there's a lot of people that don't got the energy I got on YouTube. But the bottom line is this. I really don't care what people think, so the expectations of others is not what drives me. My independence, my well-being is what drives me. 
you know, middle finger emoji to what anyone wants me to be. I don't care. Because an expectation is what someone else wants you to be. And like most things, they'll use money, power, and guilt trips to control who you are and who you want to be. A guilt trip is a form of manipulation. So this barista, she was adopted. So right off the door, there's a little bit of a guilt trip there, at least subliminally, right? Like, look, we adopted you. We didn't have to. Okay. Now, I'm not saying they did that. I don't know the parents. But I'm sure subconsciously, if I was adopted, I would always feel that vibe. You know what I mean? And I wasn't adopted, and I still felt that vibe with my father. So it is what it is. So what I told her was, look, if your parents really love you, then just like every bird, they would want you to fly out of the nest and develop yourself and accept you for who you are if you're being productive and positive. Okay. I can't tell you what career to live. I can't tell you what to do. And no one can tell you. As an adult, that's part of being an adult. You get to call the shots. However, you got to pay the bills. So you have to balance out in your own life what you want. Not what other people want you to be. That's their expectation. Now, you may say, look, I want to be a, a Broadway show dancer. Okay. How are you going to pay the rent? And if you're willing to sacrifice to do DoorDash Uber or strip in a nightclub to be a dancer... On Broadway, possibly. Hey, hey, I'm not saying you know, that's that's your life. You know what I mean? Now you got to realize that comes. You know, I'm not trying to say that's the life you should live. I'm just giving you like a little bit of an extreme example because you can still go after a dream without being a stripper. Okay, you can still go after a dream without doing extreme things. I'm not mad at any strippers. I dated a stripper for a while, and I used to call her by her stripper name, and I said, "Isis, man, get me the." And on like our fifth date. I kept calling her her stripper name. And she said, Sam, are you serious? And I said, what? And she goes, do you know my name? And I, I, I didn't even think about it. Like <laughs> I was calling her a stripper name. I don't even think she told me her name. And I was like, you know, I was like a deer in headlights. I was like this. And she was like, unbelievable. She goes, and then she told me her name. Juicy Jeff. I'm on fire. Well, hey, man, if you want to see a stripper smile, throw a tip out there. I appreciate that tip. 199 Super Chat. Shout out to you, brother. Fire emoji. Shout out to my man, Savat. What I can tell you is this, guys. People say, Sam, Sam, you get excited when you get a, when a Super Chat. Guys, did you ever tip a stripper? Hey, man, she gets excited, man. I get excited. Thank you, uh, Savat and Ju Juicy Jeff. Damn it, thank you. Thank you, brothers. But back to the story. But, I mean, either way, like I said, if you date a stripper, just remember, that's not her real name. She's got a different name. Okay. I don't know what it is, but it all ends in a disaster. Don't matter. So what I can tell you is this. Part of a well-lived life, part of your best life is deciding who you want to be. Being yourself. What does being yourself mean? It means confidence, creativity, and peace. Because you'll never be at peace being someone else. What happens after every divorce? Someone says, I lost myself. Every time you bow down to the expectations of others, you kill yourself in a spiritual way. Again, don't use this as a scapegoat to not be productive and positive in whatever you want to do with your life. Okay? But it's like it's your life. Okay. You're a bird. You're getting out of the nest. You're, you're flying out. You're, you're finding Nemo. Part of the story of finding Nemo, it, I can't watch it because it's too sad. Okay. Like I said, a lot of you psychopaths watch horror movies. Guys, uh, to me, life's a horror movie. I, I don't need to be scared. Okay. I, I'm already fucking like on the brink of like every day I'm almost crying. I mean, I don't need to watch any more sad shit. Okay. But I did watch Finding Nemo back in the day. And it's a sad-ass movie about some fish. And I'm in tropical paradise, man. There's, there's fucking tropical fish everywhere down here. But there was this... Uh, in Finding Nemo was a story about this fish that had left, basically, his parents. And he went out into the big ocean of life. And there was a lot of fear. And it was scary. And there was a lot of tears. But it's the parable of life. That's why it's so touching. Okay. Any movie, anything that impacts you that's touching, whether funny or sad, 
that means it has a level of truth in it. Okay. And that, that's why I just tell you, like, life, I, I've seen enough truth in life, you know. So what I can tell you is this. Part of being an adult and starting when you're very young, you're going to college, picking your major, picking your job, is shedding the expectations of others while still respecting others and understanding that as an adult, your decisions have consequences. So if you pick a college that's your dream college, but you're going to take on a college, a lot of college loan debt, be careful. Because stay away from debt. When in doubt, stay away from debt. Now pursue your career, but stay away from big debt. Okay. I wouldn't recommend you be a dancer and go to a school that's $20,000 more. And I told this young barista, the biggest thing you have in your favor when you're young is you got no debt, no kids, no liabilities. The only liability, the only burden you have when you're young is your parents' expectations. If you stay positive and productive, remember the two Ps, and I'm not talking about pussy, all right? Remember the two Ps, positivity and productivity, okay? If you are consistently positive and productive, I don't know why anyone, including your parents, would hate on you. Because I think at the end of the day, each parent, each person in society just want you to be positive and productive in your own way, in your own count. No. If you are negative and idle, then everyone kind of even has a right to say, look, you know, screw you. Okay. But if you're positive and productive and people still hating on you guys... Middle finger emoji, okay? And, you know, productivity, where can you start? Going for a walk, working out, doing your laundry, hygiene, and then go right into your job, whatever you want to do, okay? That'll keep you busy the rest of your life. Every time you're bored, remember, you're being idle. There's something wrong with that. Something wrong with being idle, man. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Then you start arguing with your mom about the hot pocket she brought home. And then you start to tell me, Sam, I thought, you know, scripture says take care of your uh, relatives. <laughs> scripture says hungry people will starve to death. Lazy people will suffer. It says if you're too lazy to work, you'll basically destroy your life. Now, if you can't work, if you have a major disability, that's another thing. But there's a lot of you out there playing a the game. I don't want my life to be harder for you. I want it to be easier. Okay. I'm trying to encourage you, whatever you want to do, Walmart, Wall Street, or just be independent, or be a dancer, be a chef, whatever, I don't know. Whatever you want to be, it requires you being bold enough, responsible enough, productive enough, positive enough to go after it. And through that, there will be times where you face a wall of expectation. You have to navigate around it. Sometimes you have to finesse around it, especially when you're young and you're figuring out. I'm not saying go and tell your parents to go screw themselves or tell society to go screw themselves. No, no, no. I'm telling you, when you are not obligated to a lot of things, that's the time to make decisions for your well-being and for what you have a passion about. Okay. Because the simple life, especially now as a middle-aged man, what I can tell you is that it gives you an opportunity to go after what you're passionate about. However, I've also seen people who are destitute living the simple life because they're not productive or positive. You have to be productive and positive, even if you're living simple. Idle time and negativity told disaster emoji. Someone give me the bomb and blow up emoji because it's a disaster for some people. Someone give me the bomb and blow up emoji because it's a disaster for some people. So what I want to tell you is an expectation from someone else, a parent or society, somewhat is fear. Okay, because they fear that you're doing something different with your life and you'll leave them behind. It's fear that they really do love you, but they feel if you do something, you may not be okay. I did a live feed last night about fear. Fear is a real emotion, and there's some things you should be really scared about. <laughs> like I tell you guys, I live out in the world. I don't need to watch a horror movie. I'm fucking scared out of my mind every day, man. <laughs> every day. I'm fucking barely getting it, man. I'm just trying to do the best I can. Thank you, uh, Savat and Juicy Jeff. I appreciate you. Good to see you, Tom. But we'll get ready to go all live comments. 
But these are the stories I get from real life. This is part of the interesting part about being a nomad. I'm not just looking at a sheet rock wall. I'm sweating inside of my Jeep Renegade. I'm swimming with Nemo in the Atlantic Ocean of South Florida. Magical. I'm in an episode, a rerun every day of Saved by the Bell by the Summer. And in today's episode, I met a young barista woman, a girl, getting ready to go off to college, adopted, felt the pressure from her parents to be a doctor. She says, look, you know, she has common sense, but she's not like a brainiac. And I said, look, you don't have to be a brainiac in life. Most people are not. But if you have common sense and you're willing to work, you'll always be okay. Remember that. If you have common sense and you're willing to work, you'll always be okay. You're going to go through ups and downs. Okay. I share with you on this channel. We do that. But the bottom line is this young barista has to go after what she wants. She has to respect her parents and she should get an education. She should be mindful that money is a real part of life. Don't let anyone mislead you because the money bag controls a lot of things. However, expectation itself is a control mechanism, just like guilt trip. Because if someone gives you something, whether it's a free college tuition, whether it's a free car, or whether it's a lap dance, if someone gives you something for free, okay, or even if they tip you, you can't have an expectation. Because an expectation, if you give something to someone, is a control mechanism. You're basically saying, I'm only giving you this college tuition if you become a doctor. I'm only giving you this tip, okay, if you give me a blowjob. Okay. Guys, that's prostitution. That's not parenting. Okay. Now, some of you people know about control okay. and manipulation. Good job, Lila, with that toilet bowl emoji. I see it every day, man. Thank God I don't have to clean the toilet bowl. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, if you ever want to see a real-life horror movie go plant fitness, you look at the toilet bowl. Even though some of them are clean, some of them, people go in there, man. It's like they got no regard for us. <laughs> they got no regard for the coronavirus outbreak, man. <laughs> you go on a plant fitness, you look at the toilet bowl? <laughs> the coronavirus is here, man. It's a pandemic. Oh, shit. Yeah, guys, I don't need to watch any horror movies. Now. I see enough in real life. So what I could tell you is this. Be yourself. Period. Why? Because when you're not yourself, you're going to get a divorce. You're going to get into the wrong relationship. You're going to get into the wrong career. However... Keep your debt low. Keep your obligations low. Stay productive. Stay positive. And when in doubt, do something. Don't stay idle. That's my message tonight. You form your own life. And those who really love you, whether your parents or society, they'll accept you for who you are. And if, there's going to be some people that will not accept you for who, they, who you are. You look at their record. Their ex-wife probably felt the same way that you felt. I don't like that someone has an expectation on me. They probably got a restraining order on them. Why? Because they had an expectation of someone else. And when that someone else didn't fill their expectation, they became obsessive and a stalker. So what I could tell you is this, guys. I'm starting to sweat. Okay, because it's March. But I'm in South Florida. And it's hot as hell out here. All right? And I like that. Let's take hydration break. Savat, Juicy Jeff, thank you for tipping me, brother. I'm out here stripping my ass off, man. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate everyone who clicks that thumbs up button. Thank you. And you can call me Sammy. Or you can call me by my stripper name. Sausage Sammy. Okay? <laughs> Someone put a sausage emoji in the uh, live feed. Never call a stripper by her uh, stripper name too long. You should imagine. Backwards. Shout out to the Northwest. Hey, brother. How's life? Today was a good day. I share with you some days, guys. Have a bad day. I, I share with you. Because I don't like to lie to you guys. And I wish every day was a good day for everyone. Even, even if you're arguing with your mom about Hot Pockets. I don't, wanna, I don't want anyone to live a bad life. Thank you, Juicy Jeff. But when, I, when you get a good day, guys, keep your mouth shut and don't ask any questions. Okay? If a stripper decides that she wants to make a pop in your face and you didn't tip her, guys, don't ask any questions. Just make it happen. Okay. 
So what I try to tell you something, guys, you're going to get enough times in life where you get the bad end of the deal. So when someone wants to give you the good end, you keep your mouth shut and you say thank you. Why? <laughs> hey, guys, you got to take the good days when you can get them. You're damn right. Good to see you, brother. Redline Max. Hey, Sam, hello to you. You thumbs up me. I appreciate that. Eric, what's up, man? Shout out to the Palm Coast, Florida. That's where Eric wants to go, I believe. Ormond Beach. Check out the song Society by Eddie Vedder. Maybe I will. Thank you for the recommendation, brother. Juicy Jeff. Excuse me. Juicy Jeff, I'm here chilling at this state park. Uh, state park beach. And there's a retired-looking fellow on a pretty close to me with a fancy new Winnebago Paso camper. Pretty nice, but I'm just having just as good time, uh, just as good of a night. Hey, guys, look. What's the difference between, and I saw someone living out of their XB uh, uh, SUV tonight, uh, Juicy Jeff. Juicy Jeff has got like a small little uh, Sa Saigon XB uh, SUV he lives out of. So what's the difference between living out of that versus living out of uh, Winnebago? You didn't have to spend $70,000, okay? <laughs> Put that in your, uh, you know, down your underpants and make it rain on yourself, okay? And when you don't have to borrow $70,000, you don't have to worry about society or your parents' expectations because you can live on your terms. And that's the beautiful part about being independent. However, if you got the money and you're living below your means and you want to get a class C, a class A, or whatever, I say God bless. But brother, you figured it out. That's why you're over in California just figuring out life. Why? Because you're living a free life. However, what I tell every young person is stay productive and push yourself a little bit because part of the... Part of, part of the part, part of the reason I was able to build my career was because I put a lot of pressure on myself when I was young and it almost put a demand on me to like build my knowledge base. So there's something to be said for pushing yourself, especially when you're younger and middle age. Because as you get older, you damn sure ain't gonna want to do anything. I want to do less as I get older. I want to do more. I can, when I'm in Planet Fitness, I barely want to lift weights anymore, guys. Okay, I want to look hot and sexy. Okay. But I, I don't want to do it. I mean, my, you know, your test, uh, testosterone levels go down, man. Okay? And I, I, you know, I look at some people on YouTube. I mean, as soon as I look at them, I get estrogen levels. You know, so look, guys, what I could tell you is this. Let's stay positive tonight. Love the Juicy Jeff. Savat, man. Thank you, brother. Parents are selfish. Some are, some aren't. Uh, and both of my parents have done things for me, but I eventually cut out my father. Not because I didn't love and appreciate him. But because he started to put too much expectation and demand on me. And uh, I was trying to be nice to him, but there's only so much I can do. Thank you, brother, for that tip. Tom. Hey, Sam. How's it going over there in paradise? I'm an episode by Saved by, Save by, by, Save by the Bell. I'm Saved by the Bell, summer edition, every day, all day, just on a rerun. And I love it, man. I'm, I'm dating Kelly. I'm dating uh, Rebecca. I'm dating all of them, man. Why? Guys. <laughs> I got... You know, I got the baristas. They get, everyone goes to college like every six months. I got new baristas coming in. They all want a piece of me. Why? I got, I'm got. i a good talker. That's true. Uh, Lala Ikizak. Adult kids respect your parents even two years old. Good to see you. Juicy Jeff. Clocks go back two hours this weekend. Two hours? Juicy Jeff, hold up, man. Now, I think it goes back one hour, man. Only one, man. Put the ganja down, man. <laughs> Juicy Jeff. I disagree strongly with a lot of my dad says but still manage to respect them. Well, that's why I love you, Juicy Jeff, because you are, you know, you're a loving man. You are, brother, and I got a lot of love for you, man, a lot of respect for you. Uh, good to see you, Juicy Jeff. Thank you also for that tip. American Islander. Hey, Juicy Jeff, I just came from seeing your quitting video. Well, like I said, guys, if I made videos when I was 20, I would have made a video about do this, don't do that, and I changed my mind a million times. There's nothing wrong with changing your mind. Your mind is going to change a million times from the time you're 20 to the time you're 80. And even beyond that. So never be scared to change your mind, especially when you're younger because you're figuring out life. So don't let someone else put an expectation on you. Like if I do a video of, uh, you know, everyone moved to Florida and then I decide I want to move to Alaska and people say, Sam, I moved to Florida because of you. Now screw you. Okay. But however, will that happen? Hell no. I ain't never moving to Alaska. Okay. Shout out to my girl, MVRV. Guys, I'm Florida for life. Okay. So what I can tell you is this. Uh, they called me Sausage Sammy when I was a stripper. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Carol. Hey, Sammy and everyone else. Juicy Jeff. American Islander? Cool. American Islander. It also says every person must respect his or her mother. Well, keep reading Leviticus. It also says if you cut your beard, you're unrighteous. Okay? It also says eye for an eye. Okay? Moses also killed 3,000 people, men, women, and children. Okay? 
So basically, are you saying it's okay to kill 3,000 people, men, women, and children, if they erect a golden calf? Are you? Or are you willing to be brave enough and think for yourself and say, look, there was incest, rape, slavery, and women oppression in the Bible. I can take the good parts, but if God lives inside me, I can think for myself. Who put the Bible together? Why wasn't Mary Magdalene? Why, wouldn't, why didn't no women write the Bible? Because women were not even taught to read and write. Okay, They were oppressed. Why didn't slaves read? read, read? Guys, we can take the good parts from the Bible, but we can think for ourselves. Okay. So if you read the book of Leviticus, you're reading a disaster. Because if you read... If you read that, numbers, all that stuff, guys, there's a lot of disaster in there. And so in the New Testament, same thing. Okay. You got you to you read it and you got to think for yourself. Okay, why? Guys, girls, okay. are, are you an adult or do you need someone to spoon feed you every spiritual principle? These were, who wrote the Bible? Murderers? Rapists? Who was King David? He had someone killed in the army to fuck his wife. Who was Paul the Apostle who wrote most of the New Testament that's all about love and grace? A, a person who tortured people. So, if you know, guys, you guys get upset about 9-11. How many people died in 9-11? 2,000 people? Three, how many people died when Moses killed them? 3,000. What's the difference? You tell me. Okay. You tell me. You got to start thinking for yourself, man. You got to peel back the layers of dogma, of religion. You got to honor the good parts and you got to be thankful. Some parts will save your life. Some parts will screw your life. Never forget it. All right, good job. Uh, American Islander, cool, Jeff. You should start doing collaborative videos with other people like Nomad or other people. Well, that's actually a great comment. Uh, there was another guy in here, I think Men Going Your Own Way Dictionary. He, he recommended that there is a software system that you can do a live stream and like host someone else. So right now I could be hosting Juicy Jeff and he could be masturbating in a sock. I said, Juicy Jeff, how's it going in California? And it'll still be light outside because it's like it's three hours behind. Like right now it's 9 p.m. Eastern time in California, 6 p.m. So he's at the state park masturbating in a sock with a guy next to him in a $70,000 RV. Guys, that's entertainment, man. We may have to do that. <laughs> Let's continue. Aluna, hey. Yes, my mother is queen of guilt trips. Well, hey, all I can tell you is work to get an uh, income and get out of her house. Why? Because that house is full of control and manipulation. Okay. And what I could tell you is you don't want to be around it. Respect your mother, but you got to build your life. The birds got to fly to the nest. I love you. Juicy Jeff, fire, fire, splash, splash. <laughs> kiss, kiss. Shout out to all the strippers out there. Juicy Jeff, now free riding you, bro. I got love for you. Juicy Jeff, you already know what it is, man. You could just be yourself around me. Why? Because I don't have any expectation of anyone. I already told you. I already assume that 99.9% .9 of people on YouTube are uh, butt ugly and probably borderline psychopath. So I don't have like a dream that, you know, people are out there, you know. But do I care? No. Why? Because I want to be friends with anyone who's positive and productive. I don't care if you're butt ugly and a borderline psychopath as long as you're positive and productive. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you're a doctor or you're a daydreamer. Uh, but if you're a daydreamer and not being productive, I got a problem with you. Whatever it is for you. Uh, so, guys, I don't care what anyone does as long as they're positive and productive. So, I, you have to pay for schooling. That's true. Now, you can get grants. She was going to audition to get a grant. You can get grants from the government or from that particular private school. So it can be done at a low rate, uh, depending on what you're going for and how many grants you could possibly get. A grant is basically when they give you money or subsidize your tuition. Lila A.K. Zach. In the past, I lied to my parents because I respect full. So many parents can't trust me to do social, Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. I put too far expectations. Zach lied to my parents. Well, I, th I think we've all lied. So what we can learn from the Bible is we're all sinners. Okay. <laughs> That's what we can learn. <laughs> so Lila. Uh, you're saved by the grace of God if we believe in that. So bottom line is, bottom line is, I do believe if you're struggling mentally, social media is not the place you should spend a lot of your time. There's been plenty of people I met on social media and say, look, I can't work. It's not good for my mental health. And they spend all day on social media. And what I lovingly tell them is social media will destroy your mental health and work would probably help it. However, I do recognize that some people don't have the capacity to deal with certain things. However, as good as social media can be, too much of it, especially for people who obsess over it, will destroy your mental health. So balance it out and take care of yourself. Good job. K4, damn it, how did I miss that tip? Damn it, K4, I'm sorry, brother. I'm all worked up. The strip club is popping tonight, man. K4, man, it's good to see you. I'm sorry. 
forgive me, brother, for I have sinned, okay? I was stripping, and I was busy paying attention to all the cheap psychopaths, and I didn't pay attention to someone who threw $2 out there on the table, man. K4, brother, love to you. Shout to Jacksonville. And I appreciate you coming back. I'm glad I didn't lose you, brother. Good to see you, and I appreciate you, man. Thank you, and forgive me, brother, for not noticing. And uh, God bless you, K4. And I hope you're still in here, man. Put a hand up emoji if you're still in here, K4. And tell me, tell me you forgive me. Please forgive me, K4. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, let's continue. Uh, American writer. Alan Barr, is that you traveling? Savat. People make their life more difficult than what it needs to be. Well, sometimes I've done that myself. So I'm an honest evaluator of life and of myself. There's sometimes I do self-inflicted harm to my life, but I, I try to make sure that if I do do something that's risky, that only it causes me to suffer and no one else, because I don't want to be the cause of someone else suffering. Uh, that's why, too, I like to be alone, because I don't want to negatively affect someone else. That's true. Let's continue. Tom, thumbs up. Thank you. <gasps> Doozy Jeff. Bomb emoji. Let it explode. My decision went to move new house, Venice, Florida, two-bedroom house, $23,900, Zillow, but still look, keep simple compromise of my life. Well, good job, Lila, aka Zach, and great job with those emojis. Eric, I read in a book recently that as humans, we are made to roam. To stay in one place is unjust to yourself. Just because you are born somewhere does not mean that is your destiny. Go for yours. To some extent, that is true. To another extent, humans are creatures of habits and habits and routine help us form a natural cycle. It's very unnatural to be a constant set, uh, traveler. That's why even back in the day, people became settlers. So I think adventures feeds the soul. Uh, you know, a job feeds your wallets. You need a level of stability and mobility. Everyone has a different balance because we all have a different fingerprint. So what I can tell you is just like I tell you like about the Bible, who, who wrote that book and when they were old and retired, did they continue to travel or did they live somewhere else? Like there may be a lot of people that read that wrote books, but what was their life experience? So take whatever good you can from that book, whether it's the Bible or Tom Sawyer or whoever, take whatever good and then put your own twist on it because it's your life. Don't live on the expectation of someone else's book. Write your own book. Okay. I wrote my own book, self-published it. Did it sell any copies? Not really. So what I could tell you is this, guys. Live your life on your terms, and everything has consequences. So, But I do agree that uh, there's something to be said for a level of travel in your life. Savat, I agree 100%, Eric. Eric, thanks, Savat. American writer. Cat 5 hurricane brought me from Puerto Rico, where I had a good job, to the mainland. Okay? Uh, thank you for sharing, American writer. I shout out to all my Puerto Ricans, my first girl that I was in love with, Puerto Rican, beautiful. K4, I expect you to be you. Well, K4, brother, I hope you're still in here, man, because I feel bad that I missed uh, your tip, brother. So please, uh, put a comment in the live feed, man. Just let me know you're still here. I love you, brother. It's great to see you, man. Be yourself is what he's saying, I agree. Juicy Jeff, call me by my stripper name, Sausage Sammy. Thank you. It's not laughing good. Hmm. Juicy Jeff, Sausage Sammy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Apocalypse, say, hey, man, did you DoorDash? Not this year. Last year I did, I did it enough to get baseline data to know if I got laid off, how much I could expect to make doing DoorDash in the areas of Florida I like to be, and even in New Jersey. So this year I don't plan to do it because I already have a main job in YouTube. If I do three jobs, I burn myself out. I did DoorDash because I wanted to see what it can bring in in the areas I was at. I did that, I got baseline data, I paid taxes on it because I had a 1099 form, I just did my taxes. I think DoorDash should be in the back pocket of every nomad. Because you can basically do it from anywhere and, it, and you don't have to deal with people in your car just picking up food. So I think DoorDash is a win and I still got my bag and all my supplies and my red company card. At any time if I want to do it, I'll do it. So I love DoorDash. I think it's a very positive thing, but it is what it is. It's a, a between $10 to $15 an hour job. Put a lot of wear and tear in your car. However, you do it on your terms and if you're willing to work, you can make some good side money or if you were really struggling... You could try to do a part-time if you're in a, uh, I mean, full-time if you're in a populated area. It's just not a career, uh, but it's still a great hustle, in my opinion. Juicy Jeff, laughing, perfect emoji, and perfect, perfect. Ray, all I want to do is be a poker dealer, but my parents disapprove. I'm turning 21 soon, and it's all I've ever interested in. 
Well, hey, look, I understand the level of gamble and risk in life. You know, look, that has a high level of failure. If you're willing to take the risk and if you're willing to cut off an inheritance, if you're willing to live on your own, then it's up to you. I mean, obviously, I would not recommend that you not do anything else other than being a poker. Well, a poker dealer and a poker player are different. So if you want to be a poker dealer and work for a casino and not gamble, just be a poker dealer, that could be a great job or, or a decent job. The unions aren't as strong as they once were in uh, the casinos. So bottom line is, it's your life. But just remember, when you go against your parents, you're not going to get their help. So you have to decide how much you're willing to go against your parents. That's an individual choice. I'm not going to tell you how to live. Uh, so, But a poker dealer and a poker player, they're very different. So you'd have to decide what you're willing to do. But best of luck to you, man. It's your life. Uh, gracias, vegan. Have you ever researched semen orientation? No, but it sounds like it's very harmful to your well-being because humans are meant to ejaculate, just like humans are meant to uh, urinate. Uh, that's why you have a wet dream if you haven't masturbated in a long time because you got to get it out. Increases woman attraction and testosterone levels. I'm mad at that. Well, I am mad at... Uh, if semen retention means basically you're not going to masturbate, I think you're going to become a psychopath because I think it's basically like you're saying, I'm not going to pee. Uh, I'm not going to take a dookie. So what happens when you don't take a dookie? You don't, your waste doesn't clean out of your digestive system. When you ejaculate, what you're doing is you're cleaning out your reproductive system. Okay. So as males, you create semen all the time, especially as a younger middle-aged man. You have to clean out your system. Okay. You have to flush your system. If you don't flush your system, yeah, like, you know, if you don't flush a toilet, there'll be a lot of flies that are attracted to that toilet. But guys, do you want a lot? Of, so if you don't, if you don't, if you, if you don't ejaculate, yeah, there may be a lot of girls attracted to you. But then, if a girl breaks your heart because you're going to be pussy whipped, okay, and then you're going to blame all women, become men going their own way, then she's going to take half of everything you own because you were totally blinded by lust. You weren't looking at. You should masturbate every time you see a hot girl, and after you masturbate and ejaculate, if you still want to get with her, then you know it's love. If not, it's just lust, and you're going to become a bitter man, and she's going to take half. And what am I going to tell you? You should have been masturbating. Instead, you were doing semen retention. Juicy Jeff. Sun just set over the beautiful ocean. Well, praise the Lord, says the choir. Got the N1 ready. Well, brother, I've made it happen tonight. For those who don't know, they know semen retention when it comes to the N1 sock. Okay? Because the N1 sock gets you right. Okay? I'm not mad at that. Good job, Juicy Jeff. Danny, what's up, brother? Hey, Sam. I'm still recovering from the seventh eye surgery. Love to your prayer emoji. Sending healing prayers, please. We will. Everyone right now that has a compassionate heart, put a prayer emoji and remember in your thoughts our brother Danny going through eye surgery. Remember, if, you, if you've been like me, if you've been in a situation in life where you've had physical problems, there's nothing more humbling and scary. So in a sincere way, not joking around, everyone send your prayers and your thoughts throughout the days for our brother Danny. Love to you, brother. Um, Carol, prayers to your healing, Danny. Good job, Carol. And Danny says, thank you. Juicy Jeff, wait, this dude, Gracias Vegan, just recommended NoFab? Well, Juicy Jeff, he had a video of NoFab and of not smoking weed, but I think now he masturbates. But he's, like I said, I was young too. I once did. I'm not saying you should never go through a season of your life where you abstain from everything. Masturbation, maybe abstain from meat. I used to be like very much... I'm not going to eat anything meat. Uh, then I watched animals kill each other in the wild. Guys, I, I live in human nature. I, I, every day I watch uh, an exotic like bird, like a pelican, swoop down and kill another animal. Or I watch like, a, um, they got these other birds with these long ass beaks. What they do is with their claws, with their feet, they push down right next to the lake. They push down to get a worm to come out of the soil. And then the worm comes down the soil and they fucking kills the uh, turtle or the crab or whatever. Guys, animals killing animals all over the place. Now, I live a plant-based diet. But what I've learned through extremism, whether extreme religion, extreme diet, or extreme nofab, is that you have an unbalanced mind. However, if you're not hurting anyone, I'm not mad if you want to be totally vegan. I'm not mad if you want to totally abstain from sex. I'm not mad at anything. However, look, the reality of human life, I didn't create this world. Don't be mad at me that pelicans are killing other uh, wildlife. You know, don't be mad at me, you know, that, you know, if you, you know, it, 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 look, the world is the way it is. 
Don't be mad at me that you have a reproductive system that needs to clean itself out. I didn't create the world, okay? I love God, okay? However, I also didn't kill 3,000 people, okay? So what I can tell you is this, guys. It's up to you to decide what you want. It's true. Uh, but I'm not going to live with your expectations and vice versa. You shouldn't live with mine. I love you. Uh, American Islander. Hey, Sam, my brother, what are your thoughts about uh, the coronavirus? <laughs> Guys, I'm in Starbucks and I go to the bathroom and Planet fitness. And if you ever seen a Planet fitness toilet bowl, you ain't worried about no coronavirus because <laughs> the pandemic is already here. Total disaster. And then he goes, mass transportation, pandemic outbreak. I've addressed the coronavirus. The bottom line is I think about 3,000 people have died. There's 7.5 billion, with a B, people in the world. So someone do the math. I think I did the math one day to calculate it. 3,000 people is 0.000004% of 1% of human population. So I think in the early 1900s, there was like a influenza flu pandemic. And it killed a, a few million people or whatever. So even if it killed a few million people, guys, it would still be less than 1% of society. I'm less than 1% of society. I'm living out of my car. <laughs> I'm taking a dookie and plant fitness. So can the coronavirus kill a lot of people? Yeah. And guess what, guys? If the coronavirus breaks out in a certain area, I'm going to get in my car and I'm leaving. Because we learned from the movie Outbreak that all you psychopaths who cling to your gun, if you're living in Texas and the coronavirus breaks out there, let me see how much your gun helps when they send a BF-52 bomber to nuke your ass. Because if it got too bad, the government would just nuke a state. Why? Because guys got to protect the rest of the states. The bottom line is, the only thing you can do is wash your hands, wipe down a toilet bowl seat, and when someone starts coughing in Starbucks, get the hell out of Dodge. Because what else can you do? Can't masturbate to fear. I masturbate to free Latina porn. That's true. Juicy just laughing good. Uh, Juicy Jeff sent up prayers to our brother Danny. Danny says, thanks, Sam. Thank you for the comments. Uh, Sabat, Spanish flu killed 50 million people. Thank you for those statistics, uh, Sabat. Uh, American Islander. Man, my son and I just recovered from influenza A+, plus pneumonia. I had pneumonia once when I was young. Um, basically, look, guys, being sick is scary. Uh, but there's not much you can do about it other than take the precautions, have good self-care, and good hygiene. That's it. Lila Akizak, home assisted Venice, Florida rental in future with my friends year 2023. I will go to happen. My parents hate me, Zach. Well, Zach, just try to take out the word hate and remember the two P's. And I'm not talking about pussy, even though I do masturbate to pussy. Remember the two P's, positive and productive. Even if you failed a lot in life, just try to stay positive and productive. Okay. Because that's all you can do. Life is a dookie emoji. Okay. I didn't create the world. Okay, and I didn't kill the uh, Nemo. Okay, I'm not a pelican. I didn't have any meat today, guys. I ate all plant-based. Okay, however, you know, don't be mad at me. Right? What I can tell you is this: I love everyone. Okay, and forgive me if I hurt you. And uh, my my man uh, K Ford, forgive me for not noticing the super chat. Juicy Jeff and Savat, thank you for that tip. My man Steve says, Sam the man, legendary nomad. Amen. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. AKA Sausage Sammy, you could call me. Thank you. So, guys, I hope you have a great night. I hope you live a great life. Uh, I hope you don't. I hope you learn that, you know, living with the expectations of other people is a heavy burden. It's too much to bear. It'll kill your creativity, it'll kill your peace, it'll kill your joy. And in life, you're, you're in a constant battle to keep your joy. I mean, life, like I say, it's a lot of Planet Fitness toilet bowls out there. And what does that mean? That means that there's a lot of dookie in life. And you got to really fight to keep your joy. And who wants to steal your joy? Whoever doesn't have their own. What is an expectation? It's a form of control. Sometimes even, even I have to admit myself. I had an expectation on other people. And subconsciously, even though I didn't do it intentionally, I was controlling. I tried to control the situation. You have to evaluate life, and you have to learn, let live. Thank you, Carol. Awesome message. I appreciate that word of encouragement. Thank you. Good to see you, Kira. Some people need self-control. We all struggle with that. I struggle with self-control, but it's a good goal to have. Have a goal. Aim for the moon, even if you miss your amongst the star. Move to Florida. 
Head to Miami, even if you miss, you end up in Boca Raton. Just don't end up in Ocala, Florida. All right, God bless. All right, guys, I did the best I could. I hope it helped you. I hope everyone lives their best life. Thank you for clicking the thumbs up button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Go in peace. Positive night.